Yo, how's everybody doing today? It's your boy Air Boy, and I'm back doing another Fanboy Air Review. And this time, for the first time in a long time, I'm going to be taking a look at a Jurassic World, or Jurassic Park, but whatever, Jurassic Hammond Collection figure. And this time I got the Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus. Now, before we look at this big boy, we will take a look at his box. As you can see, it's the 30th Anniversary Edition. And they picked a good dinosaur for it. This side, there's a figure. This side, the amber thing with John Hammond. Nothing interesting on the top or bottom. Back of the box, you got your product shot. A brief little bio there if you want to read it. And that pretty much does it for the box. Put it there. Now here we have the Ankylosaurus. It is a herbivore from the late Cretaceous, and it's <laughs> one of my favorite herbivores. It's not my top favorite, but it's up there. And, uh, yeah, this, uh, the overall appearance of this thing is based on the look from Jurassic Park 3. With the red markings and darker colors. And, uh, you know, color-wise, it's not perfect. But, overall, though, the quality of this figure is pretty damn good. Let's get up over here close so we can take a good look. And then molded detail. As you can see, it looks absolutely phenomenal. Like, I love how this thing looks. Molding wise, I don't think they could have done it any better if they tried. Take a look here at the underside. Uh, not a whole lot worth mentioning underneath the figure. I know it does come, uh, when you get it, it, you do have to do a little bit of assembly. The tail is separated, but it's super easy. You just line up the shape of the peg, press it in, it clicks into place, and once it's in there, it is in there. As you see, the nice osteoderms, and this big, famous club tail, which looks really, really good. I do like how this thing looks. Like, I don't think they could have done it better if they tried. Why isn't my autofocus working? Now, there, there is, like I said, the paint's not perfect. Like, um, I wish that, hold on a sec. There we go, I think my autofocus is working now. Yep, anyway, as I was saying, uh, my main uh, gripe with the figure is the lack of paint, specifically on these little horns here and the toes. But, you know, I'll probably end up taking a Sharpie to his head horns and his toes just to give him a little more color. Now, as far as posability is concerned, the head is on... There are multiple ball joints on this guy. The head can look up, look down, left to right. The mouth can open, which is nice. There's a little pink tongue in there. The legs can go in and out a little bit. It is a little limited in that regard. There is elbow joint which go up and down there is a foot joint there is rotation at both the foot and the uh, lower arm back legs can also go in and out slightly and rotate about that far in each general direction knee bend about that much foot in lower leg rotation and the foot can angle down end up quite a bit and the tail naturally as it should has a ball joint ball joint ball joint and ball joint so yeah you can get some very nice organic looking poses with the tail i wish there was a joint like in the middle of the body but, you know, I'm not going to nitpick too badly about it. Because this guy is fairly posable. And honestly, as far as the herbivores released by the Hammond Collection so far are concerned, I think this guy is my favorite. I'm really hoping they'll do the Therizinosaurus here very soon. Now, for a comparison, just let me straighten him out a little bit. Here he is next to the only other Hammond Collection herbivore I have that's worth a damn. 
the Paracerolophus. Correct me if I'm, I don't, I'm not sure if these guys lived in the same place in time. I think they did, but I could be wrong. I think the Perry might have been a little earlier. Uh, here he is next to the Ceratosaurus. As you can see, he's a little big compared to the Ceratosaurus, as he should be. And here it is, next to the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but I don't think that scaling is correct. Well, it might be. It might be correct, but I think the Ankylosaurus is meant to be uh, just, just a hair bigger. But I think that's fairly close in terms of scaling. So, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers the Ankylosaurus. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I give this guy at least a solid A. His only flaw being the lack of paint where it needs it. I love that they went with the JP3 color scheme. Because, honestly, it was probably the best look for the Ankylosaurus. Yeah, I don't think I got a good look at that clip tail. Let's take one more good look at that. Yeah, I love that. The posability, like, I think he has it where he needs it. Like, this guy's probably the best Ankylosaurus toy you will ever find. Whether you're a collector or a kid who just likes dinosaurs. Now, as he stands at his highest point on his back to the floor, I'd say he's roughly a little over four inches. From head to tail, completely straightened out. He is about 11 inches. And at the time of release, um, fuck, I totally spaced it. Um, I think he was about $25, $30, around that price range. Either way, he's easily worth 50 and uh, if you can find him for 50 or less, I do highly recommend picking him up. He is a very good figure, very poseable, very high quality. Again, my only issue is the lack of paint, mainly on these horns here and his toe claw things. But, you know, nothing that a Sharpie can't fix. So, yeah, if you can find this guy, definitely pick him up. Um, I believe he is found mostly at Target. I found mine at Amazon because we were doing free shipping at the time. They might still be. I don't know. Either way, if you can find him, grab him. This has been the... Uh, Jurassic World Hammond Collection 30th Anniversary Ankylosaurus. If you enjoyed this review, hit that like button, leave a nice comment, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will catch you all in the next review. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.